Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I want to talk about uh, some of the top uh, resources uh, which uh, you can leverage in order to create uh, your UI UX design portfolio. Now, I myself have been a UI UX designer for over 10 years uh, and I also hired many designers. And uh, when it comes to the portfolio, you have uh, several choices. But in this video, I'm just going to focus on the ones which I feel are the easiest way to create portfolios since the portfolio should be all about the work and less about the technicalities. You're not a front-end developer and you don't necessarily need to showcase your coding abilities. And if you want to do that, you can definitely do it in your portfolio in specific segments. Now, that being said, let's start with the very first one, which I recommend, and uh, that is Squarespace. And the reason why I like Squarespace so much, uh, and uh, it's also the reason why my current uh, design portfolio is on Squarespace, is that they have a lot of templates and everything is easy and drag and drop. So essentially the way that it works uh, is uh, you select uh, one of these templates uh, and uh, you can preview it. And uh, everything is, uh, of course, uh, uh, responsive, so it works on tablet, on mobile devices. And uh, you essentially start with this design. I'm not going to go through the entire process. Uh, it takes a few minutes, but still, um, everything then is, is going to be like a drag and drop. You can select the text, uh, modify it real quick. Uh, and uh, it's not the solution we ha which has the most amount of flexibility but uh, it's a great place to start with a nice clean design and you can get a, a site up in uh, really not a lot of time. So definitely keep uh, this in mind. Now, before we move on to the very next resource, uh, I want to remind you that I recently launched a free course on how to get started in UI UX design. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to check the link in the description. And uh, on top of that, uh, I'm also going to leave uh, all of the source files from the software tutorials in my YouTube channel. So you're going to have uh, access to all of those. Now let's move on to the very next resource, which is Webflow. Now, if you've been around uh, the UI UX design world uh, anytime uh, um, soon, you realize that uh, this name definitely comes up a lot uh, and uh, for very good reasons. Webflow is an amazing software to create websites. Um, but one thing to consider is that uh, it's uh, not uh, um, like there is a learning curve, especially if you want to create a more complex designs. Um, if you're going the, uh, the Webflow route, uh, my very best recommendation is to actually go and uh, uh, maybe get a, a template. They're, they have a free template and also a premium template. I personally would go with premium ones because uh, they're just, uh, <laughs> some, some of them look really cool and um, you can definitely, you can leverage a lot of uh, pre-designed work, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Webflow, you can uh, get started for free. You can create your own custom template for free. So uh, it's it's not something which uh, is only a premium. Um, it does quite cost a bit uh, in order to you know do the hosting and all that, uh, but uh, it's definitely way way better than starting and coding everything from uh, from scratch, especially if you're not uh, uh, if you don't have uh, front end experience and all that. Uh, but uh, it is a little bit more tricky than uh, other options, such as uh, Squarespace. Although the main uh, advantage with Webflow is that uh, you can create pretty much anything that you have in mind. While with Squarespace, you're pretty much limited to the technicalities of their, of their templates. So definitely something to, to keep in mind if you're going or considering the Webflow route. Now, another very popular option uh, and alternative uh, is uh, Dribbble. And uh, if you're a UI UX designer, you definitely heard of uh, Dribbble since uh, it's one of the main uh, uh, places where designers uh, showcase their work. I also have a Dribbble account and uh, I, I used to focus quite a bit uh, on Dribbble. Now, the only um, thing that I would consider if you're looking to just showcase uh, your work on Dribbble is to try to avoid and avoid just uh, having single shots of your design work, but rather try to create like mean case studies. So there's this option of having like multiple shots, and uh, ideally, what you want to do is to create uh, like mini case studies of your work. Maybe don't have like uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of shots, but uh, just keep it minimal so that. Uh, 
the potential client, the potential employer uh, can actually focus uh, on uh, your problem solving abilities as well as uh, the UI design work. And the main reason why I'm saying this uh, is because uh, um, you don't necessarily want uh, to just showcase uh, that uh, um, you're good at visual design, but you're also a problem solver. So, and that you have UX knowledge and uh, all those things which are really, really valuable for companies. So just something to, to keep in mind uh, if you're going the dribble route. Uh, and uh, another alternative which uh, can kind of like uh, give you a heads up uh, on this uh, is also Behance. And the reason why I'm saying this is that uh, Behance uh, essentially gives you the ability of uh, uh, showcasing uh, and creating uh, entire uh, case studies in uh, one single place. So as you can see, compared to Dribble, you don't j just have uh, a single shot uh, and uh, eventually a carousel which allows you to view multiple shots. Uh, but Behance uh, enables you to actually uh, add more uh, pictures and uh, the text below. So even if you're doing something like uh, brand identities, uh, um, you're going to see often uh, on Behance that uh, you're going to be able to view entire case studies. So create things like that and uh, like this. And essentially the way it works is that you have a drag and drop uh, editor and uh, you can add uh, images, you can add text uh, and uh, create these nice galleries which uh, essentially brings uh, the user into the journey of uh, this project. And this is really valuable because you can convey a lot uh, of uh, the, your problem solving abilities uh, in uh, uh, one single project. So definitely something to keep in mind. And uh, also another route uh, which uh, I get asked often, especially on uh, my Instagram DMs, uh, is should I code uh, my website from scratch? And uh, although that uh, is definitely an option, I wouldn't personally recommend it simply because uh, it's going to take uh, significantly more time and there's all sorts of uh, different uh, um, elements involved, especially if you're not uh, looking to become a front-end developer. I mean, if that's if that's the case, uh, definitely go for it. It's going to be useful also in your portfolio to showcase to potential clients your coding abilities. But if you're just looking to get into UI UX, uh, I believe that uh, you only need the uh, um, an understanding of code, definitely understanding HTML, CSS, uh, uh, some JavaScript, uh, things like that uh, uh, is uh, definitely very, very helpful and I would highly recommend it. But uh, you're not going to be expected to code uh, pages day in and day out. So just something to consider uh, on the side. And um, yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. Hope it was uh, helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next one.